Okay, in this video, we're going to discuss um, basically the impact the coronavirus has had on a range of economic measures of performance, like economic growth, um, inflation, unemployment, and then finally the impact it's likely to have on the government's budget. So this is a bit of a recap, some key terms from last video. GDP, whenever I use that term, we're talking about total amount produced in the economy, income per person, GDP per capita, unemployed people, people actively seeking work who can't find work, and the unemployment rate is the amount of people who are unemployed a percentage of the labour force, so all people that are employed plus unemployed. Um, the second point, aggregate demand, total demand for Australian-made goods and services. So aggregate demand is really important for an economy because without demand, it doesn't provide the incentive for firms to produce. So if we can't stimulate any demand, then people, businesses will produce less. As businesses produce less, people can't generate an income because we need less factors of production or less resources, uh, which will lead to high levels of unemployment and job losses. Aggregate demand, dem stimulating demand is important to stimulate production, which then stimulates the demand for resources, which then stimulates incomes. So the aggregate demand equation, I'm going to talk about this a lot in this video, is consumption, so all spending by consumers, investment spending, government spending, and exports minus imports. We talked about that in a previous video. So the impact of the coronavirus has basically had a massive impact on aggregate demand. So the aggregate demand curve, so on this graph, GDP is measured by our um, x-axis and prices on the y-axis, aggregate demand has shifted heavily, probably even more so, to the left as a result of a reduction in spending, and that's caused a big decrease in production. So there's been a range of reasons why aggregate demand has fallen, but the main one's been a fall in consumption. As we know, people have been choosing to stay at home due to the, um, the impact of spreading the virus, and that's led to a massive drop in demand for a whole range of products, from retail products like shoes, restaurants, so people aren't going to restaurants, hotels, people aren't travelling anymore because they're not allowed to, so demand for hotels, tour guides, pubs, clubs has all gone down. Um, the share market has also um, suffered a major hit, so people are feeling less wealthy, so people are spending less because the share market has crashed. Um, and last, um, the last two things, as much important as ever, consumers are feeling less optimistic about their future earning potential, so there's a lack of consumer confidence. And on top of that, the amount of people who have lost their jobs has led to a decrease in disposable incomes and a significant fall in spending as well. So there's five reasons why people are spending less. Share market has crashed, so people are less wealthy, people are less confident, people have lost their jobs, people aren't traveling, and people aren't going out to just general places because they're not meant to congregate in big groups. So consumption has fallen massively. As you can see here, the drop on consumer confidence has been huge. So basically 100 means that there's sort of as many optimists as pessimists, um, but it's dropped significantly to towards 74. So it generally hovers in this sort of 122 to 102 range. It's dropped significantly on the back of um, the coronavirus outbreak. So industries that are suffering, retail industries, people aren't shopping, pubs and clubs, anything related to tourism. Um, oil prices have gone down significantly because of a lack of demand. Uh, professional sports and professional events and entertainment. So obviously on the back of people not being able to meet in groups of larger than two now, all those industries are effectively not um, producing any revenue. So essentially why other reasons why aggregate demand has fallen, so it's mainly consumption spending, but investment spending also falls because companies aren't making money, so they're not investing and they're not spending on new machinery and equipment because what's the point if you're not selling stuff? Um, government spending, the government has spent a lot of money, but most of this money has been on giving people money, which will then flow through to hopefully boost consumption and investment. So even though the government spending has increased, it hasn't directly impact aggregate demand because that it will only do that when it flows through through increased consumption and investment. Um, and net exports, exports have fallen dramatically, um, mainly on the back of reduced tourism and bans on education or making it harder for people to come here. So education and tourism, two of our major exports have fallen but also China slowed down, so their demand for some of our key exports like coal and iron ore has also fallen. Um, also, people overseas are experiencing a drop in income, so demand for some of the luxury products we sell overseas, like Wagyu beef, has also decreased in a range of other products. So um, investment spending, consumption spending, net exports, they've all fallen on the back of the coronavirus. Um, so essentially, if you look at this graph, we talked about this a little bit in class, but basically um, this flow here represents the total spending by consumers. So consumption spending has fallen, um, private investment spending has fallen, export spending has fallen. So overall aggregate demand has fallen, which is flow three, which leads to less expenditure and therefore businesses don't produce as much, which is flow four, because if we're not spending, they don't need to produce, which is flowing on to less demand for resources, flow one, 
because if we're not producing, we don't need workers, which is flowing onto less incomes because more people are unemployed and businesses aren't hiring, which then flows onto even less consumption spending and multiplies through the economy. So through this flow model, we can see why this economy slowed down so much. So if households collectively make a decision to cut their spending on goods and services by, say, that much, then firms will reduce their output by the same amount and economic activity will slow and the economy will start to fall. In, even though there's a lot of bad things, there is some positive. Some industries are experiencing high demand, so fresh fruit and vegetables, hand sanitizer, toilet paper. Uh, online companies are still doing quite well. Pharmaceuticals, video conferencing like Zoom is really popular. Um, gaming, because people are going to be at home more. Um, they're all benefiting. Theoretically, the low Australian dollar, because we're not exporting as much, should help, but it's not really because people can't come here anyway. Um, and house prices are falling, which can be good for some people, although ultimately it's bad for the economy. So essentially what's happened is demand shifted to the left. The economy is moving closer. Um, our real GDP has fallen. Our, also, our ability to supply has also gone down slightly as well because it's harder to import parts from overseas. Um, so it's important to recognise that our ability to supply or our productive capacity has also fallen. So essentially we've gone from a point here where demand has shifted, now demand has shifted left because there's less demand for products and our ability to supply has gone down slightly. So our GDP is more down here. So we've gone from there to there, which is likely to lead to um, a big drop in real GDP, big drop in um, spending and a, potentially a recession. GDP. Uh, last thing I want to mention is that house prices are also likely to fall. Um, Australia's household debt is really high. We have the highest household debt in the world. So what the problem is, if unemployment starts to rise and goes above 10%, we're likely to see more people defaulting on their mortgages because they won't be able to pay them back. Um, that will lead to more supply of housing, just like with the GFC, uh, which may lead house prices to fall. But having said that, the government measures, including the stimulus packages, hopefully will mean that people aren't defaulting on their mortgages, which will hopefully see um, houses not lose too much value because people won't be defaulting on their houses. So what we're going to discuss now and in the next video predominantly is what the government is doing. So they've announced close to $300 billion in stimulus funding now. So what I wanted to start off with is just a general description of how governments generally work during the economic crisis and then flow on to talk about what they're doing at the moment. So there's two options for the government. There's monetary policy and fiscal policy. Monetary policy is basically lowering interest rates. Um, so over the last um, close to 10 years, we've constantly been lowering interest rates. Interest rates are now at 0.25%, which means they can't go much lower, which means the RBA doesn't have a lot of power to try and stimulate the economy at the moment. During the GFC, interest rates were around 6%, so they had a lot of ability to lower interest rates quickly, like you can see here with this big drop here. Um, but they don't have that same power anymore because interest rates are so low already. So there's a bunch of reasons why it's harder for the government to respond at the moment. Firstly, interest rates are already at record lows, so it's harder for them to stimulate the economy by decreasing interest rates anymore. Um, the fact is that even if they do increase interest rates, people aren't probably going to spend the money. One, because of how high household debt levels, so people prefer to pay off their mortgages. But secondly, um, consumers aren't really going out and spending at the moment because there's not many opportunities to do so. So it's not likely to have a big impact on the economy if they continue to lower interest rates, and they don't really have that power anyway. Um, second reason, and we'll talk about this in more detail, but the government also has more debt at the moment, which makes it hard for them to spend money, although you'll notice um, they're not really too worried about that at the moment because there are bigger concerns. So it may be hard um, also for them to spend money on construction infrastructure because it's hard for people to, they don't want people outside. Um, so, and lastly, the economy wasn't going that well before the coronavirus hit. We already had high levels of underemployment, slow wage growth, and limited spending. So we weren't in a great situation to begin with, um, which means that um, it makes it hard for us to respond as well. Now things are getting worse.